Fire Nation in the house, JLD here, and welcome to episode 1776 of EO Fire, where I chat with entrepreneurs on fire seven days a week. From accomplishing goals to launching podcasts to creating funnels and webinars that convert, I have four free courses awaiting for you at eofire.com, Fire Nation, so head on over there. And now let's chat with today's featured guest, David Hensel. David, are you prepared to ignite? Absolutely. Thank you for having me on. I'm super fired up to be on the show. I've been listening to the show for a very long time and I always get a lot of value from it. So I'm pumped to be on and deliver some value. Love it, brother. Well, listen, Fire Nation, Dave is a serial entrepreneur. He's bootstrapped several companies and after a big wake up call in his personal life, he realized he needed to change big time, which resulted in selling Max CDN and launching Managing Happiness. David, take a minute. Fill in some gaps from that intro and give us a little glimpse in your personal life. My big wake-up call, let's maybe start with this since you already mentioned it in the intro, was my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer. And this really shook me to the core, given the fact that I lost both of my parents to cancer and kind of realizing, you know, that, that life ends. And this um, made me envision me laying on my deathbed and looking back at my life, thinking, did I really do what I was supposed to do? Did I have the impact that I want to have? And, you know, will I, when I'm on my deathbed, be without regrets? And I always had this thing that I want to have a big impact in people's lives. And um, Max Dien was having an impact in our employees' lives, but not in, in the bigger picture. So I, um, yeah, this resulted in, in, in a lot of change for me. I've always been an entrepreneur. I've always been hustling. I'm originally from Germany. And my big dream was always to move to the U.S. and start a company there. And um, I sold my e-commerce business in Germany in 07, which gave me the money to get my investor visa to move to the United States, where I co-founded MaxEDN in 09, which was a pretty fun ride. Um, but early last year, we sold it to StackPath, and I moved back to Germany. And actually, no, sorry, my wife wanted to move back to Germany in December, but we decided to move to Bodrum, Turkey. Because after living in Southern California for um, eight years or so, I could not go back to German weather. Now I'm here in Turkey and I'm, I'm focusing fully on managing happiness. Well, in our pre-interview chat, it was pretty interesting. Uh, you were living in Southern California for a while and doing your thing out there. And, you know, you thought you might have left the earthquakes behind when you leave California. You know, I've, I've ridden out a few earthquakes myself. And then you told me that just very recently, you just had a 6.7 earthquake that was within 10 miles of your house. I mean, that must have been crazy. Yeah, this was, was really pretty intense, pretty scary. Thank Jeez. God no humans or animals or property got any damage. That's amazing. So let's kind of talk for a second about Max CDN because by all intents and purposes, it was a very successful company. I mean, it was. You were providing a great service. I mean, if I'm reading, you know, the byline, it is make your websites and apps faster, purge and provision content instantly, and get CDN analytics in real time. So, I mean, you're providing a great service. And so, you know, like you mentioned that you were helping um, your office employees because you were helping um, finance their lives and you are helping a lot of people who are using Max CDN. I mean, I, I know that I'm a user and, and it's helped me for my website and all this stuff and the user experience. How did you just still not feel fulfilled even with all that going on? It was a really fun ride and I really enjoyed growing the business and the team was really phenomenal. So I, I really miss working with them. But if I want to have a really big impact in people's lives. So after this experience, I kind of sat down and really thought about what's my personal mission. And I came up with this after thinking about this for a very long time. And I want to be a change agent who's transforming individuals and organizations so they can reach their full potential and consciously live the life they desire. And I want to make sure that everything I do is in line with my, my personal mission, what I want to accomplish, because this is what makes me the happiest and fulfilled at the end of the day. 
Now, Fire Nation, I kind of want to identify and highlight the point here that, you know, David didn't come here overnight. I mean, he had to go through a process. And so, you know, no matter where you are on your journey, just realize that it's part of your process, it's part of your journey. And you're going to, you know, have to maybe deal with some failing companies, maybe deal with even some successful companies that, you know, maybe don't quite fulfill what you're looking for. But that all can be adding up to learning that's going to get you to a point where, where you just heard David rattle off his, his life mission statement. I mean, hopefully, we're all working towards one of those ourselves. Now, what would you say today, David, is your area of expertise? So I thought long and hard, what can I do to really have an impact in people's lives? And I had this epiphany a few years ago when I came home from work uh, and we had a long meeting about the roles and responsibilities at Maxidian. And I was sitting on my couch and my daughter back then was still in diapers. And I pointed it out to my wife saying, hey, honey, looks like Emma needs a diaper change. And my wife got really upset at me that I didn't change the diapers and I, you know, kind of pointed out to her. And I thought to myself, why are we fighting about this? This doesn't make any sense. My wife does it most of the time, changing the diapers, and I'm totally cool with doing it. But how should I know that it's my turn right now? And then I realized that we never talked about roles and responsibilities in the household. And the next morning we sat down and did this and kind of went through, you know, who does what and when. <clears throat> And this took away 80% of all the friction we ever had in our relationship. And I thought, holy cow, if if this works so well, maybe maybe we can take other things from business and apply to our personal lives. Because, you know, like people have thought countless hours and spent lots of money to perfect doing business. You know, it's even taught at university. And um, all these things we do in business, like having a mission statement, having a vision statement, having regular meetings, it's just there to make sure this group of people in the business is successful and there's no friction. And the family is also just a group of people. So all these things translate over really, really well. So I know that this kind of really led you into an aha moment of sorts. So kind of maybe continue talking about this and, you know, how you acquired this aha moment and then really, you know, how you turned it into the success you're experiencing today. Yeah, so we started to implementing all business principles in our in our personal lives, you know, kind of having regular meetings. We used Trello to organize our family. We came up with our mission statements, which is really phenomenal when you want to eliminate FOMO, the fear of missing out from your life. Especially now that I sold Maxi and I get approached a lot from people like say, hey, do you want to work work with me on this business? Do you want to invest or, you know, do you want to consult or, or mentor here? And it's, I usually would do it just because I like these people, but running every request or every big decision through my personal mission statement makes me then decide, like, hey, is this in line with my personal mission statement? Then I consider it. And if not, it makes it much easier to say no. You know, and So we did all these uh, um, things in our relationship, for example, sitting down and planning, like you do in a business, kind of having our... Um, doing proper budgeting or just planning out the year in terms of health, wealth, growth, fun, and relationship, like what goals do we want to accomplish? And similar to what you do with the Freedom Journal. And, you know, applying this to your personal lives brings you so much success that it was so impactful for, for my family that I became very passionate about sharing this with others. And this is why I put together Managing Happiness. One thing I want to say, Fire Nation, is that it's hard for an entrepreneur to go from begging for a yes. I mean, when we were starting off our businesses, you know, I was begging for people to come onto my show. I was begging, you know, going on other shows. I was doing this, I was doing that. I mean, we're just looking for that one yes. And then the yes comes and we're so excited. And then, you know, we start having a little bit of success and a couple more yeses start coming. And then you start having massive success and then the yeses, they never stop. That's all you hear. And then you get to this point where you have to have this mindset shift of, wow, how do I say no? Like I've been saying yes to everything because I've been building this now, but now I need to really start understanding what I need to say no to. And you know, that Derek Sivers quote, if it's not a heck yes, it's a no. It's a no. Yeah, when you get to that point as an entrepreneur, you've really got to work at it because it doesn't come naturally. And I love that part about mission statements, David. That was really huge. Now within that, share one unique tip or a tool or a tactic that you've really found that's worked really well in your business, helping other people that you can share with Fire Nation today? Something that we haven't heard yet. The biggest thing for me was to figuring out my work-life balance by applying these things to my to my personal life because I always had like a lot of 
you know, I, I was always the guy who's 100% focused on the business and kind of hoped. Let's get real specific, David. I want to start this. I want to start this part over. I, I really want you to get granular, like dive down. Give us a tip or a tool or a tactic. Don't talk about yourself. You know, don't get vague. Really get down and dirty with something that you found works for people like my listeners. Apply roles and responsibilities in your home life and all these unspoken expectations will go away and you're, you will be able to focus on business when you're at work and you will not think about the fight you just had with your spouse and vice versa. So give me like a quick example of that. Like what does that look like in real life? Always had a lot of fights with my wife for coming home too late from work because, you know, it's, it's, it's very consuming running a startup. And we came up with this rule that I have to be, I can come home whenever I want. Just on Thursdays and Fridays, I have to become, be home for dinner. And this made my wife happy and took a lot of the stress off for me. Mm. See, Fire Nation, putting down one rule that makes sense for everybody. I mean, listen, David, he can work his booty off Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday into the late night now. He knows no guilt is going to come with that. Thursday and Friday, he was home by dinner, enjoy the weekend, then he's back at the grinds. I love that. So, Dave, we've been talking about things that have been working for you. I mean, obviously, Max CDN was overall a great success. What you're doing now, you're having a lot of fun with and, and really helping a lot of people out. But what was your worst entrepreneurial moment to date? What's that story? Well, I've been an entrepreneur for, for quite some time now, and I went through a lot of crazy stuff, like we've been hacked before, we had a partner stealing from the company, etc. But I think the worst one was when about three years ago or so, when business was going actually really, really great. And I was, um, you know, meaning that I was very busy with taking care of everything that was going on. And then my daughter was born, which was awesome. But for all of you out there who have kids know that having a kid really throws you off in terms of you, know, you don't sleep anymore and completely changes your entire rhythm. So this added a lot of stress to my um, to my life and um, two weeks after my daughter was born, my mother passed away, which was very tough for us because we've been very close with her. And my wife had, um, unclear abdominal pain, very severe abdominal pain, and she needed two surgeries to get this fixed. And two weeks after this was done, my grandma passed away. And so this was like this crazy storm going on in my life. And Figuring out how to manage business while this is going on was was quite a challenge, but I, I managed it pretty well. And an employee of mine asked me, like, hey, what's your secret? How can you be still productive at work? How can you run around with a smile? Why don't you break down, like, even though so much stuff is going on? And I didn't have an answer for him, and I, he asked me to think about this, and this is what I did. And I came up with two things that gave me the ability to go through this stuff. And the first one is um, I use this gratitude stone, which I pick up every morning and I go through the things I'm grateful for. And then I have this gratitude stone in my pocket. And um, sometimes I still get stressed out, but then I feel a stone in my pocket. And this brings me back into this all this well state of mind, because when you're filled with gratitude, you, you can't, there's no room for anxiety or for, for stress. And at the end of the day, I, when I come home, I take out the stone out of my pocket and I um, go through the things that went great this day because often you have a very productive morning, but at 5 p.m. you have an uncomfortable conversation with an employee, a customer, or, or with your spouse. And you think the whole day sucked, but it did not. And it's, it's very important that you, you know, you're, you're emotionally strong. And by doing this for, for many, many years, this made me really emotionally strong. And I know that you're also a big fan of gratitude. It's, it's part of the Freedom Journal, as far as I know, right? Absolutely. Start your day, both the Freedom and Mastery Journal. What is the one thing you are grateful for? And so the, the second thing that was very helpful for me was that I'm very good at accepting things. It doesn't matter how bad the situation is. If you can accept it, then you can act. And otherwise, you just react. And as an entrepreneur, you always have to deal with some sort of problem, even if it's a luxurious problem that, um, you know, you outgrew the office and you need no office space. But in, in every situation that comes your way, you have to be calm and lead your team through it. And if you freak out, then you know, nobody's helped. 
Fire Nation, perception is reality. I mean, we're all going to have these bad days. We're going to have these traumatic life events. We need something that brings us back to the core. That's why I love that example that David just gave. And also, when you start your day off with gratitude, which, as he mentioned, both the Freedom and Mastery Journal have you do, it just gets you in that mindset. And then, you know, I love when you end the day that way as well. So, you know, listen, I know some crappy things happened today. Let's let's talk about them. Let's see what went wrong and how we can maybe fix them. But let's also talk about what went right. Because as entrepreneurs, man, we focus on the negative over and over again. And David, in just one sentence, what do you want to make sure our listeners get from your story? I guess it's finding the, the proper habits that will make you succeed like having this you know doing gratitude in the morning because you know you you need to do these things over and over and over to build up this muscle versus you know you can't take a shower and expect that you're good for the week you have to do things over and over and over so i guess your your habits will shape your success what are you most fired up about right now I'm super fired up, up about my upcoming podcast. I'll do a podcast for, for Managing Happiness where on, I interview successful entrepreneurs on how they manage the, you know, having a family and running a startup and how to fit home into hustle. And uh, I actually took one of your courses nice. um, on, on, you know, how to set up your podcast and um, got a lot of value from this. And I'm, I'm really excited to launch this in a few weeks. Nice. And uh, do you have a name for it? Working working title? Um, the Managing Happiness Show. The Managing Happiness Show. Fire Nation, you can go to iTunes, your favorite podcast app or directory. Type that in. Check it out because by the time this goes live, that podcast should also be live. So, David, we are about to rock the lightning round. So don't you go anywhere. After we take a quick minute to thank our sponsors, we'll be right back. My greatest passion outside of business and family is my health, Fire Nation, and I know a huge component of getting my body in the best shape possible is what I consume. That's why I've been researching plant-based supplements that will help me not just feel my best, but also perform my best. So here's the deal. You already know I drink Organifi green juice every morning to get my greens in, and now I'm using Organifi's organic plant-based protein too. Organifi's protein uses whole food vitamins and minerals and contains five digestive enzymes that won't cause bloating like other plant-based proteins do. Organifi also adds MCT oils, which are healthy fats that keep you fuller longer and are great for brain health and mental focus. Organifi's protein is smooth, filling, and the vanilla flavor is yummy. It's made with the highest quality ingredients, and all you have to do is add water or almond milk. See for yourself. Visit Organifi.com and save 20% off with promo code FIRE. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I dot com, promo code FIRE. Whether you're working on a small project or a huge launch, it can be easy for things to slip through the cracks. Don't let your designs be one of those things. Let Design Crowd help. One of the many great things about Design Crowd is rather than paying expensive fees and waiting weeks for an agency to pitch an idea or create a great looking logo for you, you can have what you need within days. All you have to do is launch your brief, then designers will begin submitting quality designs for your review. Within hours, you'll receive your first design, and over the course of several days, a typical project will receive 60 to 100 plus different designs to choose from. All that's left to do is pick the best design and improve payment to the designer. Visit designcrowd.com slash fire. That's D-E-S-I-G-N-C-R-O-W-D dot com slash fire for a special $100 VIP offer, or simply enter the discount code fire when posting your project on Design Crowd. David, are you ready to rock the lightning rounds? Absolutely. <laughs> what was holding you back <laughs> from becoming an entrepreneur? Actually, nothing really held me back be from becoming an entrepreneur because I've been an entrepreneur pretty much in my entire life. I never worked for anybody. But the thing that was holding me back being an entrepreneur, entrepreneur was being an introvert. I call myself a recovering introvert. And I learned over the years how important it is to be extroverted and to to go out there and not fear rejection. And um, the thing that helps me the most with this is to make decisions out of love and not out of fear. Because in, let's say, being public speaking, for example, as an entrepreneur, it's, it's important to get out there or to be on a podcast, for example. As an introvert, I would have never done this. And um, 
if I act out of fear, I think about how am I perceived and, you know, do things, do people think I have a weird German accent or what, whatever they may be thinking, then I'm in this place of fear and I can't really deliver anything. But when I act out of love, because I, you know, what I'm saying here is potentially helping people, then I can actually deliver something. What's the best advice you've ever received? The best advice I ever received was making decisions out of love and not out of fear. My my yoga teacher told me this and I almost fell out of downward facing dog because it's something I always knew, but I was never able to, you know, wrap my head around or, or put it in words. Another example from this is like, let's say you're, um, you're a salesman and you want to sell something. If you sell out of fear, you think about the mortgage that you have to pay or the numbers that you have to reach. If you sell out of love, you think about how can you help this, your customer to solve their pain points and you'll be much more powerful when you, when you act out of love, not out of fear. What's a personal habit that contributes to your success? I think habits are, are everything. They determine if you're healthy or unhealthy, if you're successful or broke, or if you're happy or unhappy. I, I personally use a habit tracker on my phone to make sure I'm always in line with, with making sure I'm staying on top of my habits. And the habit that makes me succeed the most is, I think, eating the frog. I always start with a task in the morning of the day that I do not want to do because most likely that's the task that is the most important one. And also, if you let this frog sit there and grow, it will take away your energy because you always think about the thing that you're procrastinating on. And if you actually start the day out with eating that frog, it gives you a lot of energy to get stuff done. If you could recommend one internet resource, what would it be and why? I just found bitrix24.com, which is a software that pretty much does everything for your business that it costs next to nothing. It does task and project management, CRM, chat, video chat. It's a social network. It has calendars, mail server, HR tools. It's, it's really crazy how packed this is. And I've just been implementing this in a friend's company, and it, it's, it really blew me away. I'm not affiliated with them at all, but it's, you should really check this out if you look for something in your, in your business that's really powerful and costs you next to nothing. If you could recommend one book, what would it be and why? I'm a huge book nerd. I dropped out of school when I was 15, so I've been you know, learning a lot. I'm a huge personal development geek, and I'm a really big fan of Napoleon Hill. And the book that... Um, had the biggest impact on me is Outwitting the Devil, where he interviews the devil asking him why we're not reaching a goal or mm. what's, how he's holding us back from, from reaching, reaching our goals. And the biggest goal, uh, the biggest thing, the biggest tool that the devil has is fear. And um, so, yeah, this, this book really changed my life. I can highly recommend everybody to read this. Have you listened to the audiobook version of that? I did. Oh, it's epic. Fire Nation, if you haven't listened to the audiobook version, the devil has like this James Earl Jones voice and it's, it's, <laughs> it's entertaining. I remember listening to this on a long train ride while I was in India and just being like, man, I could just listen to this all day. It's fascinating. It's such good content. And the crazy thing is, is, and this is what I was really mind blown, David, is that he wrote the book in the 1930s. And during the book, the devil said, hey, you know, the world's not going to even let you release this book. So I don't care about it. You know, this is like the conversation we're having back and forth. And sure enough, it took 80 years. It wasn't until 2011 that the Napoleon Hill Foundation actually released this book because it was so controversial for so many different ways back in the day. It uh, still is to this day, but it was just crazy to, to see how that actually came true. And Dave, let's end today on Fire Brother with you giving us a parting piece of guidance, the best way that we can connect with you, and then we'll say goodbye. All right, so the, the best piece of, piece of guidance I can give you is that you manage your family like a business. We manage the things that we care about. We manage our money, we manage our business, we manage our health. And we should also manage our relationship if you really care about it. We have to make sure things are growing. Otherwise, they are not fun anymore. Or you know, it's, if a plant is not growing anymore, it's going to die. If a business is not growing anymore, it's going to die. And if a person or relationship is not growing anymore, then it's, it's also most likely um, going south. And you can connect with me at davidhensel.com. It's my blog or managinghappiness.com. This is where the course lives. And in case you're interested in signing up, you can use the coupon code FIRE to get 25% off on the course. Boom! Fire Nation with the opportunity. And I wanted to mention real quick, guys, that audiobook is great, Outwitting the Devil. And you can actually get that audiobook for free 
If you haven't already signed up for Audible, you can go to eofirebook.com and you get a free 30-day trial, plus your first audiobook is for free. Definitely get Outwitting the Devil as your first one. I highly recommend it. It's amazing. And Fire Nation, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. You've been hanging out with DH in JLD today, so keep up the heat. And head over to eofire.com. Just type David in the search bar. His show notes page is going to pop up with everything that we talked about today. These are the best show notes in the biz. Timestamps, links galore. And of course, head directly over to Managing Happiness. Dot com. If you actually want to check out the course, if you use promo code FIRE, you get 25% off. And David, thank you for sharing your journey with Fire Nation today. For that, brother, we salute you, and we'll catch you on the flip side. It was a pleasure. Hey, Fire Nation. Hope you enjoyed our chat with David today. And if you are ready to master productivity, master discipline, and master focus in just 100 days, visit themasteryjournal.com and use promo code podcast for a nice little discount as a way to say thank you for listening to the podcast. I'll catch you there, Fire Nation, or I'll catch you on the flip side. Looking for a protein that uses whole food vitamins and minerals? Organifi's organic plant-based protein tastes great, is made with the highest quality ingredients, and all you have to do is add water or almond milk. See for yourself. Visit Organifi.com and save 20% with promo code FIRE. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com, promo code FIRE.